Can you see my screen? Yes. Jai Baba. Okay. So why don't you read how to love God and then yes. we'll get to the book. Arthar, Meher Baba ki jai. How to love God? To love God, to love God, the most practical way is to love our fellow beings. If we feel for others in the same way as we feel for our dear ones, we love God. If instead of seeing faults in others, we look within ourselves, we are loving God. If instead of robbing others to help ourselves, we rob ourselves to help others, we are loving God. If we suffer in the suffering of others and feel happy in the happiness of others, we are loving God. If instead of worrying over our own misfortunes, we think of ourselves more fortunate than many, many others, we are loving God. If we endure a lot with patience and contentment, accepting it as his will, we are loving God. If we understand and feel that the greatest act of devotion and worship to God is not to hurt or harm any of his beings, we are loving God. To love God as he ought to be loved, we must live for God and die for God, knowing that the goal of all life is to love God and find him as our own self. Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Thank you, uh, Ashok. And uh, I think I had a heavy uh, week in the last one week trying to figure out what to read and how to uh, continue this journey of learning. And I think uh, finally I took the plunge yesterday by making the decision myself. And, I, and the decision is that we are going to read Stay With God. Okay. So I know I looked, elicited some uh, opinion. I got some. I didn't get a lot uh, in support of my uh, decision. But I pray to Baba that uh, this decision helps all of us and we are able to learn from this experience. Uh, I think I'll just tell you that a thought that came to me when I was running this morning. Uh, if you look at the Mandali, there's Don Stevens and then there's Francis Brabazon, of whom I did not know much 15 days back. All, all I know about him is what I have learned in the last 15, 20 days, though his name, of course, comes up prominently in uh, the Baba world. What what I was what came to my mind this morning was uh, my attachment, which I have disclosed and uh, been open about earlier, about being very excited and inspired by Don Stevens, is probably because of my intellectual leanings, right? My interest in the academic understanding and going deep into uh, uh, the mm -hmm intellectual understanding than anything else. And uh, Francis, on the other hand, like Don, came from the Sufi world, but he was more the heart. So I saw in Don Stevens the mind and in Francis the heart. And what better way to support my decision that we need a balance of both even in this group. So we, we I know we are more focused on learning, we are more focused on understanding, but along with that, uh, the position of love and position of heart is supreme, as described by Baba. And a good representation of that is uh, Francis Brabazon and the book we're going to take up. So with that, I'll just pause uh, for uh, getting some quick remarks on anybody who's seen that 10 minute video and anybody wants to say anything else before we get started. Uh, anyway, I have, have already given my uh, opinion. Input, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, I didn't uh, get the copy of the book, uh, the PDF, earlier when I searched. Uh, uh, that I thought was a constraint for us. Uh, but later on, you said that it is already available on the website uh, of the trust. So we can download and use that. So and, if you're uh, seeing the screen right now, I've got yes. a new folder. It's called Stay With God. It's under uh, the bigger folder, which is Meher Baba books by other authors, in which there's 
Lord Meher and Stay With God and nothing and everything that we read. So if you go into the Stay With God folder, there is a book of uh, references, I mean, a set of references uh, beautifully put together, uh, classified by session, by what parts. So that's uh, almost 20 odd files, right? A lot of rich content, whatever references he makes and whatever references come across in the sessions as referenced by the names, we can go back and refer them as we need. So that's that's available for everybody. Uh, apart from that, there is a syllabus, which I'll get to in a few minutes, and a daily guide. He's also done what we wanted to do very uh, from a long time. He has quizzes. He has questions and learning objectives for each session. So he has done it over 16 sessions. And uh, just to give you a little bit of background on Ward Parks, which again, he himself talks about in the intro video, he's, he's, he's an academic and his interest is literature and specifically poetry. And that fully comes across in his passion and excitement about this book. So I think we are lucky to take this up. I'm, I'm, uh, so more, we'll refer all of this. There's a long version syllabus. The book itself is here. And then you have a daily guide and a list of books and texts, which uh, he has again put together. So quite a bit of uh, research material available. We'll slowly unravel, slowly learn. But uh, it's just not another poem. It's like I, I feel the same level of excitement as probably embarking on uh, reading uh, Ramcharit Manas or uh, reading and trying to understand uh, something at that level, right? So I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. Yeah, yeah, Mama. Sorry for taking. Ah, okay, so, okay. Yeah. So we have a we have the book. We have a roadmap. Yeah, book is here. Go ahead, and then mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is lot of literature available to support how to go about learning this. So I think uh, we can start off and learn uh, from this. And uh, as you have already mentioned, uh, it is uh, certified by Baba as. Uh, oh yeah, we'll read about that in a minute. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. we, we'll read about that certificate and a uh, huge uh, cert certification and support that Baba has given. Anybody else before we start? Ashok, did you see the intro? Sanjay ji? Uh, uh, so, mm -hmm. Sartik, uh, we go ahead with it. I, I didn't, I was not able to see the, I have not, I would not, not able to c c communicate and I have not able to see that, but this sounds fine with me. It's okay. Very good. Thank you. Sanjay ji also said yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, sure. Uh, okay. Kartik, uh, yeah. Jai Baba. Sure. Thank you. So with that, uh, this is this is something where we can start our journey. So this again, I literally found minutes back when I was uh, chatting with uh, Amaji uh, before the call. So there is a site we should explore more of this. It's francisbrabazon.org. I'll drop a link on uh, Telegram. So this is the preliminary remarks. And if you if you, those of you who have uh, listened to the ten minute. Uh, uh, a video introduction. I think there's a lot of commonality between that and uh, what he covers here. So this is his introduction to the book. That is Francis Brabazon's introduction to the book. And I'll start with that. Stay with God, preliminary remarks. It's Genesis. The story is told con Brio in Robert Roos's privately printed book, The Making of a Book. Again, uh, there are two uh, books written about Francis Brabazon, at least uh, the ones that are referred by Ward. One is the book Making of a Book. The other is uh, a book by uh, uh, Keating. And I think that Keating book is also in the folder. I'll open it up as we uh, as we see it. And it, both of them uh, chronicle Brabazon as a person, right? So and, and his love for Baba and so Francis and I, I continue reading, Francis and Don Stevens, as the two Westerners attending the 1955 Sehwas program in India, were both handed by Meher Baba the task of commemorating their experience. Don, to write, listen, humanity, and Francis, stay with God. This again is another 
affirmation that we are in the right path. We finished Listen Humanity and now we take up Stay With God, which is around the same time ordered by Baba. So Con Brio is with Viga. The story is told Con Brio is what is used in Parabau. In 1956, Baba asked Francis, where is my book? So this is in 1955. And then 1956, Baba asked Francis, where is my book? Francis had been rather busy building Meher House in Sydney and organizing Baba's visit to Australia and could only reply, I'm sorry, Baba. I will start immediately after you have left. Not too much eventuated until at the Roos's suggestion, he decided to work through his poetic sensibility. Francis, who had been writing poetry for a long time, decided to produce a major work expounding the theme and ideas of God Speaks to show that the real progress and discovery for humanity were through the fruition of the inner quest of self-discovery rather than in voyaging onto the stars. The form of the book was, like Beethoven's late string quartets, to be different movements based on a central idea. This idea was his daily experience of knowing and loving Baba. The artist makes art from his own experience to refresh the spirit of others. His aim was lofty. Art is the act of talk, talking about love. In that act, one uncovers love, that is one's real, real self. He saw it as a series of variations on God Speaks. The book grew over the next two and a half years until Francis was able to take the draft with him when he was summoned to India in 1959. In India, he had the task of reading to Baba from his book for an hour each morning. Mehar Baba's role. Baba, of course. Baba was, of course, the muse and the sponsor of the project. He provided corrections and some new material as well as some new discourses for the foundation and two other prose sections. Baba also gave the poem Extraordinary Endorsement. Francis wrote, wrote to the Russes. And this is the line I like very much. The miracle that I hoped for and yet dare not hope for, when I was writing Stay With God, apparently occurred. Baba apparently says that it is second only to God Speaks, that it supplements and even gives life to God Speaks. The whole book was read to Baba and most of the verses repeated two, three, sometimes even four times. Baba even commented, I feel so proud having written this book through you. He also said that it would be read for a thousand years and that there would be volumes written on and about it. Reading it, a few mere hints, best out loud, but certainly at least for the inner ear, slowly with each word clearly articulated a bit the way Francis used to do it. Then. Because this is worse, a pause, often just small after each line. As you practice reading it, become very aware that it is riding on patterns of stressed and unstressed syllables. These get a bit more emphasis than if you were reading prose. By and large, they follow the natural emphasis you give when you are aware of the meaning of what you're reading. But there are generally the same number in each line. This gives the verse structure and balance. He's talking about the syllables. When read skillfully, the verse has an incantatory feel. It sings along. The stresses are not, of course, in the same place in each line. So the poet can build up a balance between sameness, the number of stresses, and difference, their position in the line. And the number of unstressed syllables can vary a lot. And by the way, this is, I think, the first slide. Wings toward the glaciers of Kailasa, where the first fathers nourished, the seed of God and Siva gentled Ganga and Parvati, walked by streams of living heart. For Siva was Jesus before him and Parvati, his loveliness in the earth. As was Rama, as was Krishna, as was Abraham, and I am Zarathustra and Buddha and Muhammad and their loveliness. God's avatar, as is now Baba, 
sing baba your descent this time on earth your brightness in our night your comfort in our separation for it is my love's desiring baba to compose a book on this this theme which you set me and to this task my spirit spreads its wings only to fall stifled and overcome the song groaning within my breast impossible of utterance for only a perfect master can speak a book and saintship is the least qualification to sing of you although a profound scholarship is sufficient for assembling of mere facts but i have neither devotion nor learning for the task you can see a lot of variation there so the utterance seems natural but the regular beat gives it weight and rhythm try it on the first 10 stanzas of book 3 where even the first short line once god that great deed will bear five strong stresses to give it lofty emphasis this is not free verse unless you follow the skills of francis the wordsmith you will bore the socks off your listeners and yourself baba please permit me not to be like that help me <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> your poem one has to be very focused actually to listening to this other than when yes. we are reading text probably uh, even if our minds divert a bit we are able to catch up but this we have yeah, to be very very focused word by word <laughs> true and then i think you have to find time during the week to read that again and probably listen to uh what parts session as well so that it becomes all comprehensive but we will see where we go we will unravel that okay the poem one day one day we will have a full commentary on stay with god but for now some suggested lines of approach to what is a formidable bit of verse by any standard hopefully a brief introduction and appreciation will encourage some to perform it individually and in groups as vivid presentation and to contribute to a full commentary which is owed to the world slowly comes the realization that this is our story our own epic blowing us out of our cozy individuality to feel the vastness of our history and of god's love within us indeed not easy in these po- post modern times how hard for a poet to make us feel confidence in our own heroic and epic nature and of an all embracing sacred history as francis's early poetry has insisted we have become dehumanized and isolated in our egoic fears and pleasures once we make the mental jump of letting the power of the verse involve us we become avid for more of our story and when we have confidence in our own heroic nature we can perhaps believe in our divine nature real art doesn't come to us on a plate ready for consuming it is a challenge we have to prove ourselves ready to receive it in having the guts to embark on the project we have to escape from this limited modern individuality as he says in the second and third stanzas of the poem he was sustained by accepting that he was fulfilling baba's order and also by the amazing conviction that is built towards in the poem that ultimately art is the loveliness of god embodied in man that's a big theme by the way the last book of uh, culture uh, is, is, i mean the book is about culture and then he talks about how uh, humanity has lost uh, true touch with i mean touch with the true nature of art we'll get to that uh book one is meher baba the occurrence of reality in illusion a challenging task how to give a detailed picture of meher baba's life in verse and to make it attractive and memorable francis goes about this task with great economy and he also breaks up the story with dry digressions these are important we are being educated to see the real history of humanity heroes and saints little known in the west fun to look things up these days with google we hardly need the notes at the back nice changes of key to from the heroic to the humorous and vernacular 
Francis is claiming that like all sacred art, the poem is an offering to the divine power that has inspired it. His muse is Baba and his powers are inspired by his faith in this guidance. This is why the poem carries such a convincing tone of prophetic confidence. As Judith Wright, one of Australia's leading poets said, it has the authority of real sincerity. Baba is displayed as the latest historic manifestation of the periodic breaking through of reality into the illusory nightmare of history. Nice line. Babe Baba is displayed as the latest historic manifestation of the periodic breaking through of reality into the illusory nightmare of history. History is a nightmare and is illusory. Periodically, we break through with the reality with uh, 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 Avatar and Baba is the latest. Book two. Yeah, if somebody can ask who is Baba, this line can be used. <laughs> Very nice line, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Baba is the, you know, what was, what was yeah. the line? Baba, yeah, Baba is, is the latest. The latest. Yeah. Then it displayed, we can remove. Uh, Baba is the latest that. historic manifestation of yeah. the periodic the breaking periodic through of breaking through of reality into yeah. the illusory the nightmare of history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very powerful. Yeah. Book yeah, two. Quite significant. And so also it uh, it, it distinguishes, distinguishes between uh, duality and reality very nicely. Yes. Okay. Um, book two is the love song of John Kerry. Uh, illusion singing to reality. Again, I, I, it's important you get a sense of the five books. So there are five parts. So I will go through this thing now so that you have it in the back of your head. Uh, illusion singing to reality. Again, just a quick preamble before one starts the poem. Take a look at the first two stanzas. In the first, the five beats per line are hardly noticed as the quiet narrative tone proceeds. Then in the lyrical incantation of the second, an extra beat is added. Uh, or maybe we can come back to this uh, later and, and do it just before so that it's even more relevant. So the four, the three, rather the five books are, the first one is Meher Baba. The second is actually a love song. And John Kerry is the uh, pseudonym uh, uh, Francis Brabazon used. So it, it's his own poem, but then it's uh, stylized as though a uh, John K Kerry is writing in love for Baba, right? So it's a love song and I believe it's uh, very, very beautiful. And I think uh, it's, it's a good expression of uh, the Sufi model of love. So um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, as uh, what, what Parks explained, the third book is God Speak, God's Speaking. And uh, if you look at the timing, it's around the same time uh, that God Speaks got published that this book was ordered. And, you know, so it is uh, it is in the light of the big moment that probably uh, uh, was in the life of the Mandli, right? God Speaks coming out, Baba saying the things about it. So you see a lot of importance given to the book by uh, uh, Francis by dedicating one whole book for uh, God speaks. So this is more about the message. So it's the divine theme and uh, uh, he dwells at it at great length. Then the fourth one is again uh, the Sufi tradition that he's used to uh, and the fact that he's giving a guide on how to get on the path. Steps to his feet is the section. So here he's basically saying this is how, what a person on the path, on the path to spirituality on the path to discipleship to Meher Baba should do, right? And the book, the, the fifth book is again about Baba, but then uh, he uses this word world axis and world axis is basically a translation of the Sufi Arabic term Kutub, right? So he's, he's more talking about that role of Baba, the Kutub role of Baba as the world axis. And I think this is probably the largest book, I think. This has got most parts and stuff. So we'll come back and read this just before we start each one so that it's even more relevant and we don't forget it. And now let's go to what all we have from what parts. This is the book. So again, as I said, it's all on the folders. Uh, these are actually pages uh, from Ross's book. 
So he's actually scanned it and put it up. Very sweet of him, right? So this is the second book that I talked about, uh, Ross Keating, and the first book, uh, Ruse. Uh, uh, both both those books are referenced. I don't know if Ruse's book is also here. So this is reading in support of the book. Okay, so that's one of the files here, and uh, it's under the folder and is marked as S1, which is for session one. And yeah, this is a bibliography. And this is one of the poems. OK, so with that, let's go to uh, the syllabus and the daily guide. Right. So this is actually uh, uh, designed to be a 16 session course. And this was done over 16 weeks in the same format uh, that they did for God Speaks, which was a one hour video followed by a Sunday open house discussion on that one hour video and the reading. And the students were expected to read and then come come to that Sunday session and uh, interact to ask questions. So obviously, in our case, uh, we can do it in our own pace. We may do it in 16 weeks quicker or later, but then we'll see how it goes. So he breaks up the sessions and the topics there. We will see how uh, we can align to this. And I think we will learn as we do a few weekends, we'll figure out how this works, right? So session one, uh, uh, by the way, so what I shared on the Telegram group was just a 10 minute intro, which is uh, which acted as inspiration for taking up the book. After that, uh, uh, we have uh, um, one A and one B, and then you have 16 other sessions that uh, uh, Baba has, uh, I mean, uh, what Parks has uh, put out matching the uh, syllabus here, right? So I think that's about it. And in the daily guide, you have, I think, the questions as well. So you have the, uh, the session, and maybe we'll read the, the detailed uh, segment one before starting segment one, and then we can go to the questions after we are done with it. So quite a bit. Any questions, any thoughts before we start? So um, Karthik, I just want to share with the whole group that uh, Baba's God Speaks is a textbook in all the religious courses, religion courses in at Harvard. So these are pearls of wisdom and this is really a good choice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely good choice. But uh, I, I, I have a divergent opinion on that. It's again, uh, I, I don't think we need a validation of Harvard on what Mahar Baba is to the world. Yeah, yeah. That's the way I would react to that. <laughs> it's right. in the world of duality. I'm just saying that. Yeah, yeah. In, uh, in that sense, uh, I don't care if Harvard does it or not. I'm, I'm more interested in more of the world getting to know about this, uh, you know, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm not here to uh, discount what you're saying, but just, just my personal opinion, especially, uh, you know, uh, uh, organized education has actually failed us, right? They have, they have fed us what they want us to be fed on. If, if God speaks was in curriculums the way it should be, we all would have been better human beings by now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Right. And all yeah. the all the chaos in the new world order would have been avoided. Exactly, exactly. Cool. So, anything else before we get started? Jai Baba, everyone. Jai Baba, Ravi. Oh, How are you? Jai Baba, Ravi. Mm. Jai Baba. I see Kama is there as well. So, Kama, you're you're missing in action, but then happy to see you back. So, we we're doing this. Uh, poem now. Welcome. Yes, Jay Baba, thank you. All right. So let's get uh, started with the read then. Stay with God. Uh, Avatar Mahar Baba Ki Jai. Stay Jai. with God, a statement in illusion on reality. Francis Brabazon. Uh, the illustrations are by John Perry, 
uh, New Humanity Books. So again, as you can see, this is the, the first edition came out in 1959. Baba ordered the book to be done in 1955. A uh, brief biographical sketch, uh, good reference point for us is also the biographical uh, uh, comments that what part snakes in 1B. Again, that's session 1B, the second uh, of the series, if you don't count the intro. That's about an hour where he talks about Francis's life, right? So Francis actually, okay, we'll read about it. So I don't want to repeat. Francis Brabazon, a biographical sketch. Uh, Francis Brabazon uh, was born in England in 1907. He moved to Australia with his family when he was a young child, the youngest of five children. They settled on a farm in Victoria. In his book, The Wind of the World, he describes these early days. He was close to his father, who had been a drama critic, and through him became interested in literature. By his early teens, he became disillusioned with his Anglican, Anglican faith because of the lack of answers to his questions. In the early 1930s in Melbourne, in the midst of the Depression, he worked at odd jobs and educated himself, learned to play the piano and achieved an unofficial Australian record at weightlifting. Francis met the Baron Juan Frankenberg, a Sufi teacher from the school of Hazrat Inayat Khan. Many of the Baron's group later became followers of the spiritual master Meher Baba. Francis began to paint, was drafted into the army early in the war, but did not fit into the military life. Too many questions again. An exhibition of his paintings in Melbourne during this period influenced the fledgling antipodian movement in Australian painting and especially the early work of one of Australia's greatest artists, Sidney Nolan. Brabazon turned to poetry and was published in the controversial Angry Penguins magazine and Earn Malley's journal until his poetry became mystical and from then until his death was ignored by the various literary movements in Australia, except for the young La Mama poets of the late 60s. His first published books, Proletarians, Transition, and Early Poems, were written during the 1940s. In 1947, the Baron gave Francis the discourses of Meher Baba. Meher Baba stated that he was the avatar, the Christ, God in human form. Francis was extremely interested. The Baron died in 1950, and in 1952, Brabazon traveled to the USA and met Meher Baba, who made a profound impression upon him. In 1954, Meher Baba called Brabazon to India, where they traveled to Andhra Pradesh. Journey with God, published in the same year, describes this experience. Seven Stars to Morning, his first major book of poems, was published in 1956, the year of Meher Baba's first visit to Australia. Country Li Life said of it, I think Country Life is a magazine, covers the planet in a riot of intellectual experience, sincerity, and much dignity. This was followed by publication of a long narrative poem, Cantos of Wa Wandering, in 1957, and a book of seven mystical plays, Singing Threshold, in 1958. In the same year, Meher Baba visited Australia again and stayed at a place in Mumbai, Queensland, that Francis and other followers had built for him. This was to become known as Avatar's abode. Subsequent to this vi visit, Meher Baba invited Francis to India again, where he stayed with him as an intimate disciple for the following 10 years until Meher Baba dropped his physical form in 1969. When Brabazon went to India, he took with him the almost complete manuscript of Stay With God, which Meher Baba had asked him to write. Francis says in the preface to a later work, the word at world's end. I have infinitely crafted my ideas before beginning to write. And in the best work, the idea forged its own form of expression. In Stay With God, the opening line came to me 12 years before I wrote that book. And it was not an odd line jotted down and forgotten. I carried it with me, noting its possibilities and acquiring the material it would need. Meher Baba had the book re read to him three times. 
stating that it gave life to his own book, God Speaks, and said, my love will touch the hearts of all who read it as no book has ever done. I repeat, my love will touch the hearts of all who read it as no book has ever done. Stay with God, 1959, is a lucid exposition of the advent on earth in our time of the God-man and of this living embodiment of Godhood as the salvation of mankind from its state of permanent anxiety and threatened annihilation. This God-man is not seen as the son of a father, but as the very self of each one of us and therefore easily knowable to anyone directly without an intermediary. In the creative process of perceiving the meaning uh, of the God-man, uh, Karthik, you yeah, can yeah. read that sentence once again. Sure. This God-man, this is the line you want again, right? Yes, yes. This God no, the man. previous one was said. He repeated it twice. That is. Oh, you mean part. this one? Yeah, that's very nice. My love will touch the hearts of all. Read it as no book has ever done. Anyway, I'll continue from that point uh, as a repetition. Stay with God, 1959, is a lucid exposition of the advent on earth in our time of the God man and of this living embodiment of Godhood as the salvation of mankind from its state of permanent anxiety and threatened annihilation. This God-man is not seen as the son of a father, but as the very self of each one of us and therefore easily knowable to anyone directly without an intermediate. This God-man, I repeat, is not seen as the son of a father, but as the very self of each one of us and therefore easily knowable to anyone directly without an intermediary. In the creative process of perceiving the meaning of the God-man, the author examines the values of mankind, both Eastern and Western, past and present, as represented in art and literature. His language, arising directly from the urgency of his message, and the clarity of his vision avoids rigid crystallizations by which modern poetry is immobilized and essence and vitality excluded. Upon return to Australia, the word at world's end 1971 was published. Then in Dust I Sing 1974, a collection of poems written at the insistence of Mehbaba. These poems were based on the form of the ghazal perfected by the Persian poet Hafiz of Shiraz, 1320 to 1390, Mahar Baba's favorite form of poetry. Another collection of Brabazon's Ghazals, the beloved is all in all, were published posthumously in 1988. Other published works of Francis Brabazon include Let Us the People Sing, 1962, which is Songs, The East-West Gathering, 1963, Three Talks, 1969, Wind of the World, 1976, The Silent World, 1978, A Biography of the Early Life of Meher Baba and the Golden Book of Praise, 1982, Songs, yeah, they are songs. Some of his writing remains unedited and unpublished. Francis Brabazon died in 1984. His grave is at Avatar's abode on the side of the hill under the pine trees overlooking the ocean. Okay, dedicatory. To Meher Baba, my lord and friend. Lord and friend uh, of the uh, world. Karthik, yeah. uh, yep. if we observe the uh, list of uh, publications, mm -hmm. after his, uh, say, uh, meeting of Baba, all his books are on Baba, probably. Before Probably, that, yeah. he had, yes. Uh, yeah, I don't think he published anything before that, right? So oh, he yeah. met Baba in 1952. Yeah. So I, I don't know, maybe before that he published something. Yeah, 1940s, oh, you're right. 40s, That's yes, just yes. proletarians, transition and early poems, whatever. Yeah. And then it's all Baba, of course. 
whatever he's done after that has love beloved or baba in the name <laughs> so yeah dedicatory to meher baba my lord and friend lord and friend of the worlds here is the book on the theme you set me and which i took into my heart and pondered to the end that your dear name be known to men and send perhaps one to your feet look indulgently on it or else forsaken am i look indulgently on it or else forsaken am i yet lord correct my wit and mend my heart in love for love is my story yet lord correct my wit and mend my heart in love for love is my story and in this book i have labored to tell something of your most marvelous labor and in this book have i labored to tell something of your most mar marvelous labor when of myself i wrote not of your savor was in it but when i wrote of love i wrote well even showing forth some fraction of your glory when i when of myself i wrote not of your savor was in it but when i wrote of love i wrote well even showing forth some fraction of your glory nice dedication flowery by the way thinking of school i was very bad at poetry okay i hated it <laughs> just 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 as background so bear with me sorry baba sorry francis brabazon i'll do my best by the way others anybody has written poems anybody likes poetry jump in you can read you can uh, do this and lead it so all yours <laughs> i too struggled with poetry but i used to like uh, now and then and uh, things used to come in my mind and uh, i had written a few verses when i was in bsc later Whoa. on <laughs> uh, forgotten verses okay nice that's nice okay let's go uh, uh, to the preface in this book i have tried to offer some praise to one who has not much changed the course of my life as given it sanction for the course of my life was already set when as a child i used to weep at the beauty of night and a little later on compose and a little later on compose verses on the meaning of life as i walked behind the flow the quest for beauty what it is and its relation to truth has been my religion every seeker longs to meet one who has found and my longing led me eventually into the presence of one whom i recognized as the very personification of truth and the very embodiment of beauty that ideal or perfect man whose occurrence on the earth is recorded by history and literature in whom the existence of absolute truth and an absolute beauty is proved and through whom they proclaim themselves if i had been born in another time or place i would have only sung his praise analysis and comment would never have occurred to me they being foreign to art except when after becoming a real artist one by choice becomes a teacher but being born when i was and having lived my life in a portion of the world in which all utterance is contaminated by self interest the avoidance of comment is impossible i ask the reader to allow that although some of this comment may seem harsh it is directed at conditions rather than at persons it is personal only to the extent that persons are identified with conditions the world of false values that i attack and that i myself my own condition is the target it has hit before it touches anyone else myself being the world of false values because it is myself 
who by having turned away from the eternal truths from the virtue of man created the false values but i hope my comment will sometimes be entertaining he is uh, specifically referring to a lot of critical comment he has uh, made on art on artists and um, you know maharathis and towers towering personalities of the renaissance uh, he has been utterly critical of in the last uh, portion of the book i mean again this is from the introduction so um, um, so that's why i think he's trying to be uh, he's setting the context for that and saying that i'm not just critical I, it's because of the identification of the false values right he he says i mean from what i heard uh, in the intro he says culture and arts only role is is godly is about god whereas obviously renaissance kind of slowly moved it away from god right so that's that's uh, that's something that he makes a powerful point about in the years of trying to absorb the truths of truth and beauty i have been as a pygmy wandering among giants trying to pick up the elements of their speech and in the writing of this book i have been supported and encouraged only by the smile of the king of the giants and the faith of a few friends what i have written may be of some value to others but if not not that is their affair mine was in the writing and in the continuance of that course which i once set but which is now in the hands of my beauty and truth which is mad baba okay so uh, this is important uh, for everybody the foundation uh, gives some uh, ontological references to the baba literature so some of this we may be familiar with but we'll still go over it uh, it's more to make the first time readers of mahar baba literature through stay with god be get comfortable with the concepts foundation self paramatman is one indivisible infinite and eternal this self is the innermost self of each one of us it is the sole creator of the universe and of the world and beings which inhabit it this creation is created and exists only in imagination in the mind of self it has no real existence but self identifying itself with its imaginary creation deludes itself that it is actor and experiences the resultant pleasures and pain of action in the world of men according to the shape and color of the physical form it has assumed to the degree of energy that activates form and the quality of mind that informs it self identifies itself with a particular race and people and period and culture as being a man or woman having strength or weakness beauty or plainness industry or laziness success or failure it indulges in psychological subterfuge at all levels in order to augment or diminish its own impressions or its particular identifications and it views all forms and conditions in the light of these particularized impressions what is called the everyday life of a man is self identified with a particular form which has no existence except in its own imagination experiencing through expression and in experiencing exhausting a certain fund of impressions and acquiring a fresh stock from which experiencing it retreats or escapes each night in sleep only to be awakened the next morning by these impressions clamoring for expression and this is a good uh, line uh, what is called the everyday life of a man is self identified with a particular form which has no existence except in its own imagination experiencing through expression and in experiencing exhausting a certain fund of impressions and acquiring a fresh stock from which experiencing it retreats or ex- escapes each night in sleep only to be awakened the next morning by these impressions clamoring for expression 
the consciousness of the majority of us may be likened to one removed to a distant place closing his eyes and vividly picturing reassociation with family or friends the picturing being so vivid that for the moment he imagines he is actually and really with them when he opens his eyes again he opens them onto the scene of his present surroundings the persons and place of his picturization have vanished in the same way thus self closing its eyes to its own boundlessness in which it enjoys absolute power knowledge and bliss experiencing as real the worlds of its own imaginary creation to use another figure the eye can see everything before it but cannot see itself when a mirror is placed between it and what it has been seeing it sees only itself it cannot see any of the things it has been seeing similarly when self looks out on its creation it sees only this creation which its imagination has created and it does not see itself but when it looks at itself in the mirror of truth it sees itself and creation disappears in imagination creation existed in reality it has no existence self in us remains entranced with its imaginative creation yet at the same time because of its continual frustration through the experience of limitation and because of the ceaselessly changing conditions of its environments it exerts itself to break through the boundaries of limitation and to stabilize conditions so that it will enjoy a somewhat permanent well-being i'll repeat self in us remains entranced with its imaginative creation yet at the same time because of its continual frustration through the experience of limitation and because of the ceaselessly changing conditions of its environment it exerts itself to break through the boundaries of limitation and to stabilize conditions so that it will enjoy a somewhat permanent well-being however the permanent solution of the problem of life cannot be found in the success of attempts to push back the physical limits obstructing knowledge or in controlling those factors that determine the conditions of living because even granting success consciousness will still not be emancipated from the domain of its own imagination and its resultant frustrations will be merely of a different order that is granting success whereas in actual fact success can never be achieved because the very minds of those attempting a solution along these lines are also only the product of imagination it can never be anything more than the unreal trying to solve the unreal or the dreamer trying to understand the riddle of his own dreaming the only lasting solution can be only by self biggest which is none other than the real self in each one, each of us disillusioning itself from its own false imagination and realizing in experience its natural condition of unlimitedness and unchangingness if this is objected to as being escapism or denial i reply that since as shown above every one of us each night seeks with varying success to escape both from the successes and failures of the day and since our very programs of progress demand for their carrying out a denial of fundamental liberties both for ourselves and for the peoples these progresses would encircle or crush the use of the words escapism and denial becomes absurd escape and denial consists in the refusal to correctly ascertain the structure and constitution of the world and man and such ascertainment is within the reach of all and to draft proposed solutions upon the basis of undeniable fact this is a real denial of intellect and an escape from the conclusion which its relentless use 
the unswerving application of the method of science and the unflinching pursuit of art would force us to accept. True humanity and the only possible ground of brotherhood lies in the recognition that self is one and is the only existent being. In the pursuit of the realization that one is that one in the big O lies the only solution, to the problem of life. Escape is certainly to be longed for and planned and worked towards. Escape from the prison of aggressive wanting engendered by our ignorance of truth. Denial is certainly to be practiced. Denial of the false self for the true self. Self and self, the big S and the small S, cannot live together. Either self is denied for self. Either the big S self is denied for the small self. Or the small S self must be denied for the big S self. Our superstitions and false freedoms already brand us as escapists and deniers. It becomes us now, if we would maintain any semblance of manhood, to deny the supremacy of ignorance and escape from the bondage of ourselves. It is, I think, uh, I think, uh, sure. I think the uh, whole uh, bunch of paragraphs that we read uh, uh, clearly puts across the message which we are all uh, sort of struggling to understand uh, from Baba literature. It's a very vivid explanation. So needs to be uh, uh, read repeatedly to clearly uh, fathom the meaning of all that. Yes, and it's a breath of fresh air from a language and style standpoint, because we are used to the C.D. Deshmukhs and the Don Stevens still now. Yeah. Uh, so this is a breath of, I mean, this is new style and very, very nice, nice uh, use of expressions. And as you said, needs multiple reads, but uh, is a good summarization of all that we've learned. Yeah. All that you're learning. Yeah. Okay. okay. It is, I think, it is, I think, commonly accepted that the slave is the last one to revolt and attempt his own emancipation from slavery. He has to be roused to action and awakened to the fact that he can obtain a vastly better condition by those who, being outside his conditions of misery, are moved by feelings of humanity or compassion and have the intellectual equipment to fight those responsible for and controlling the enslavement. Very interesting analogy, which is very, very true. The slave is the last one to revolt. So we are in that state, right? We are the last one to realize. And once you have the, uh, 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 at least an inkling of understanding of this, you are like those outside that have this glimpse and want to uh, uh, motivate and get the rest of uh, uh, the humanity, which is the slaves, to come out, right? Yeah, he has to be roused by the to the action and awakened. That's a very powerful word which Baba uses, awakened, and he calls himself Correct. awakener. Awakener, yeah. yes. Next paragraph is talking exactly about that. The supreme arouser and awakener is known as the avatar, the messenger, the Christ. He is biggest self completely and perfectly aware of himself as self, I guess. Because of his compassion for men, he directly and voluntarily assumes human form for the relief and emancipation of all humanity from its enslavement by greeds and passions and its self-imposed oppressions and misery. The supreme arouser and awakener is known as the avatar, the messenger, the Christ. He is self completely and perfectly aware of himself as self. Because of his compassion for men, he directly and voluntarily assumes human form for the relief and emancipation of all humanity from its enslavement by greeds and passions and its self-imposed oppressions and misery. 
since self is one indivisible and never two and manyness is an appearance only it necessarily follows that avatar who is that one indivisible self is the actual real self of the apparent many individual selves of us it also necessarily follows that since avatar is that self knowingly by having experienced and overcome the illusion of apparent appearance and is not an apparent self subject to illusion his consciousness cannot in any way become entangled in the seeming creation and thereby diminished by his assumption of form since this assuming is the voluntary outcome of his own free will i'll repeat this slide good good definition for an avatar uh, avatar yeah it also necessarily follows that since avatar is that self knowingly by having experienced and overcome the illusion of apparent appearance and is not an apparent self subject to illusion his consciousness cannot in any way become entangled in the seeming creation and thereby diminished by his assumption of form since this assuming is the voluntary outcome of his own free will but remember he becomes so the pain is real the suffering is real and like he says it's a application of his free will and it's a voluntary uh, 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 assumption or becoming uh, a human and going through that uh, suffering the stress and havoc and cry of our times has brought down or brought it brought into actuality for us this avatar the prerequisite for his help this time no less than when he was called jesus or krishna is surrenderance modern man cheated of the fellow fellowship which his democracy promised and forced more and more to surrender to authority which betrays and even threatens to exterminate him becomes alarmed when faced with the idea of further even total surrenderance and becomes ala- and because alarmed assumes a disdain and even contempt for those who have had the courage to make this surrender we have long forgotten that democracy is based upon surrenderance surrenderance to one another in gentleness to the humanity of ourselves in trust to the idea of self biggs in natural enthusiasm and we have become essentially aggressive we have become cowards making out we are heroes we demand proof that first s a uh, big capital s self is one and that our brother is our brother second that an individual man can be the conscious totality of that self and third that he whom others declare to be him is indeed him we demand i'll repeat the line we demand proof that first self is one that our brother is our brother second that an individual man can be the conscious totality of that self and third that he who whom others declared to be him is him that's so true the first true proofs may be obtained by an honest intellectual inquiry as stated in the kato upanishad go back from effect to cause until you are compelled to believe so the first two here are uh, first is our, our brother is our brother that is self is one and second is individual man can be the conscious totality of that self that is individual man can uh, uh, go through that experience and he is quoting kato upanishad for getting that second a thorough examination of suffering and its causes as recommended by gautam buddha third practicing renunciation of oneself as one is as required by jesus living the attributes of real humanity trying to become a real human as demonstrated by muhammad the third proof rests upon the evidence of his authority and his works the authority of love 
and the works of love. This proof must be sought personally in his presence. So the third one is the question to prove whether whom the, uh, the others declare him to be him, are you sure that he is him? So that proof is only done in his presence. And I, I may <laughs> dare say uh, in physical presence or otherwise. <laughs> we are required, paraphrasing the opening lines of Shankaracharya's Viveka Chodamani, to surrender ourselves to this one who is the end of all knowledge and its questing, the goal of all love and its suffering, the only self, the bliss. But he, although the only one with real authority, unlike the authoritarians, demands nothing of us. We are left free to make the demand of ourselves. We may remain surrendered to our own inadequacy and futile aggressiveness, or we may surrender to our own realized completeness and unity as manifested in him. We may retain our hardness of separate identification or willingly dissolve ourselves in our own being of love. The ocean becomes drop. The drop becoming ocean has to drown itself in itself to realize that it always was the ocean. Beautiful. Easy the last line again. It's very profound. The ocean becomes drop. The drop becoming ocean has to drown itself in itself to realize that it always was the ocean. Yes, this is from the whim to the realization. Yep. Two sentences. So fascinating. So by the way, in the um, God speak sessions, I know uh, when we were uh, uh, hearing about this uh, I mean, this is a digression, but uh, uh, all of all, all of the people that were were uh, there in the past uh, uh, will relate to what I'm saying. Uh, the concept which Baba talks about uh, deep sleep, right? Uh, deep sleep being uh, 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 which we understood a lot more in nothing and everything on how everything is in suspended state. The creation is in suspended state. Uh, uh, and if you recollect, uh, we were trying to find out references in Vedanta. What Parks actually talks about, uh, I think, Mandukya Upanishad, or I, I forgot. I mean, I, I was in my workout and I heard this on, on uh, the video, but he, he actually gives a reference and he says that uh, one of the Upanishads talks about exactly that. So maybe some of you also have discovered that, but I just thought I should mention that. The, the Shukti Avastha being uh, closest to God. Uh, deep sleep. Shushupti. Shushupti, correct. The Vedanta, Vedanta specialists are Ravi and you, so I'll defer to whatever you guys say. <laughs> okay, so let's continue. Out of that nothing, mind came. Out of mind came this everything. Out of mind came energy. Energy holds this everything. Out of mind came this matter. Matter means this everything. This everything is also nothing coming out of that everything. Again, I forget the <laughs> session number, but there is a very beautiful session where uh, 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 Ward Parks uh, and the God Speaks lectures talks about this uh, topic and how uh, it's, a, it's a very important uh, phraseology and conceptual uh, analogy that Baba uses all the time. But then he describes it very well. And I thought uh, uh, maybe I should immediately post these things to the group because uh, I, I, I don't know which session now. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, I'll repeat this line. Out of that nothing, mind came. Out of that nothing, mind came. Out of mind came this everything. 
out of mind came energy energy holds this everything out of mind came this matter matter means this everything energy holds this everything but ma- matter means this everything this everything is also nothing coming out of that everything ah uh, yeah ah uh, so what is the first that nothing beyond beyond the, so the big nothing yeah no and beyond the, the, the nothing came from the own point out of that nothing came mind okay om point before om point no no it's actually before om point just before om point because at the point of uh, from the point of om point uh, everything starts to emerge after i mean you mean after yeah whatever yeah just uh, no, at that point a, onwards before and after after om point is the creation point okay. the lahar and yeah. afterward who am i the question came that created the sanskara and simultaneously the consciousness was created correct so consciousness and the first sanskara are created at the same point or time or whatever we call it yeah at the time of uh, om point yeah so this mind is the one which creates the world whatever we see is our mind creates see we we stand outside let's say we saw a building the building is not in our mind the image is created in our in our mind the image of the building so we assume that building i know this building so i am i'm aware of this building uh so that's that's an imagination image is imagination yeah ah uh, uh if we agree on that what is the last line this everything is also nothing coming out of that everything what is that everything So just connect the the first, right yeah, out of ahead, nothing Ravi. out of that nothing mind came right the own point is yes. came out of nothing right yes. so is a, is connecting to the first one see out of that yes. nothing yes. mind came out of mind came this everything everything is whatever we think this world this bangalore this madras this us this india all these things are everything right and also we see the matter and this energy connected with the matter and that came from our mind but this everything whatever we think is real is nothing is just an illusion and that illusion is coming from the own point and that own point is from the everything in capital yeah everything means god everything is god yes. exactly so yes, i was yes. waiting for you to finish uh, ah. everything everything is god everything ah. in capital is god right so yes, out sir. of that emerges the nothing out of nothing comes the mind the mind out of that creates the everything including energy it is felt as matter again through the mind and matter means this small everything because you are still in that realm this everything small everything is also nothing coming out of that big capital everything which is god yes and uh, this uh, way he has written it he has given nothing in capital starting with small capitals and Correct. nothing mind that nothing mind came out of that nothing mind came okay and afterwards he comes to the uh, 
bigger everything that is uh, once again the font size is bigger here yeah he comes only here so and ah. i think he covers it further so let's hold our forces and okay. see if he okay. explains okay. it okay. a little okay. further okay. Okay. right so this nothing i continue has come out of that nothing i think this is clear right so this nothing is the small nothing which is the creation has come out of that nothing and that is beyond beyond that that nothing the big nothing came out of that everything which is again in big e i mean in capital this nothing has taken the form of everything which is not everything so temporarily this nothing the small nothing has taken the form of everything which by the way is not the big everything i'm just so tempted to i i'll i'll try to find that video that he, he exactly explains this fantastically what parts 5 minutes in a one hour video now the challenges i have seen about seven videos in the last week <laughs> <laughs> maybe in 5 minutes 5th 6th 7th it must be in one of that i think yeah the one the one that talks about the largest chapter chapter 8 so it should be down to two videos that i should be able to find it from so in cha- in the part that explains chapter 8 part 8 of god speaks he talks about the three things one thing is this not- nothing and the everything second is the sleep uh, the sleep and uh, uh, wake wakeful state and the third aspect is the creator preserver death destroyer all three are covered in that session that much i remember i'll find it but this is very beautifully explained there yeah kartik please please put the links on telegram that is if i find it i will try <laughs> okay searching through a video is very painful acha i was just one thought came i want to share with the group and that is that yeah. the, the everything which is in you know bigger capitals is the universal thing and no, there is nothing gets subsumed into everything can we assume that yes yeah, sure. no so what is universal big universal, universal means, or uh, the universal, universal force yeah god correct agree because universe as we know it itself has been challenged by baba right yeah so yeah, yeah. so there are universes multiverses we are now convinced science also accepts agree agree i am talking so about so universal one. as the big big you and the big force and as god i accept Correct. Okay, let's uh, continue. We must lose ourselves in order to find ourselves. Now, uh, you left uh, two lines, I think. Hmm. Oh, wait a second. Coming out of that, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I'll repeat that anyway, just so that we get continuity. This nothing has come out of that big nothing. That big nothing came out of that big everything. this nothing the small nothing has taken the form of small everything which is not the big everything out of formless big everything which is god formless big nothing has come which is creation out of formless big nothing formless nothing has come which is creation sorry formless nothing is not creation formless big nothing formless big nothing is still formless it's not creation out of formless big nothing formless nothing has come which is the small everything yeah. okay it's, please read please stop please ask but i know it's tough because of the nature yeah, of the uh, words <laughs> no formless big nothing must be the om pai out of this formless yes. everything no. formless correct. nothing has come correct out of this formless nothing formless nothing formless has come. small nothing has come which is creation yeah om point is formless big nothing yeah in fact i'll be honest when whenever i was reading this in god speaks uh, the first time this just was confusing as hell i mean it just went over my head i just used to switch off yeah. whenever it is everything nothing and <laughs> so but it's a key concept baba gives uh, uses this a lot so it's important we understand it okay 
continue we must lose ourselves in order to find ourselves thus loss is gain we must die to self in order to live in god thus death is life we must become completely void in order to become completely possessed we must become completely void in order to become completely possessed thus complete emptiness means absolute fullness we must become shed of selfhood in order to become become absorbed in the infinity of god thus nothing means everything and this is by meher baba avatar meher baba ki jai thus nothing means yeah. everything uh think... the last uh, last line sir uh-huh. uh, maybe uh stress the silence which is stressed by baba we uh, must become become void completely void in order to become completely possessed as complete emptiness means absolute fullness we must become shed of self food in order to become absorbed in the infinity of god mm. this can happen only in silence i think is it silence of the mind you refer to or is it silence of the spoken word no both <laughs> actually both actually yeah, i agree with both so the, if yes, it is yes. both i agree with you that is the void yes that is the void that's aspirational silence is one step and we will yeah. never comprehend why this avatar did what he did but obviously there is a deep meaning to it but why this both silence of the mind and silence of the uh, spoken word i guess yes so, okay so yeah. silence of the external silence will help to silence the mind i think oh absolutely it's a good start it's a good start it is the way to start because uh, without that uh, you you are you are nowhere so the first frame of yeah. reference is silencing the word right but right. we should not get lost there the real goal is to silence the mind yeah. vipassana yeah the vipassana journey anyway so i think we'll start uh, the uh, po- poem tomorrow i will yes, just sir. probably quickly uh we'll wrap up uh, the recording and i will show you what i wanted to show you um mama ji and others can see.